Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Matt here. This video will be part two of our FSFO version five tutorial series in which we will discuss how users can edit and change their flows and checklists to mimic the virtual airlines they fly for. In FSFO, that can be accomplished via the editor, which can be accessed by clicking setup and then editor. Once you're in the editing screen, you want to choose which aircraft model it is you wish to edit. In our case, it's going to be the PMDG 737. Selecting a model will populate the uh, available profiles or checklist to you. As you can see here, we have two associated. We have the one that I created the South for Southwest Airlines, and then we have the default one that shipped with FSFO. You will always have a profile associated with the aircraft. Uh, if you delete it, rename it, FSFO will just recreate it. This ensures that, uh, that there's at least one profile available for every aircraft. All right, after choosing your aircraft, you wanna come down, or excuse me, your profile, you wanna come down here and choose the phase of flight. They are all listed here. We're gonna go ahead and choose the pre-flight flow. Choosing a flow or checklist will populate the available actions uh, for a given flow and checklist. Note, hopefully they're uh, named in a mechanism that you can easily identify what action you're looking for. So for example, FMC, hydraulic, ice protection, lights, and so forth. For this example, we'll go ahead and just choose the engine bleeds. Next, we want to choose, hey, uh, who is responsible for this? In our case, we're going to choose the first officer. And then over here, we want to choose a value. The values correspond to the descriptions down here. So you can see we selected engine bleeds. It populated the description field, in which case zero equals off, one equals on. Let's go ahead and choose one. And then we can add this to the pre-flight flow by uh, just clicking the add button. Now, these flows, these are listed in a, a sequential manner. So the uh, copilot would iterate through every one of these as depicted here, one at a time. Uh, so for this example here, once he got to the, the pre-flight or started the pre-flight flow, the first thing he would do was he would turn the engine bleeds to on. And we know that because the action is engine bleeds. Here's the name, here's who's responsible, and then the value down here is associated with this one. So we see a value of three here. If we want to find out what that does, we could just highlight the item and then look down here. So we have three. So it looks like it's going to be bright if dark, off if day. So if this, uh, once the copilot got to this action right here, and if it was uh, at night, he would turn the dome light to uh, bright and then he would turn it off if it was dark. So the value will correspond to whatever is listed down here. Okay. So let's say that engine bleeds is part of the pre-flight flow checklist, but it doesn't belong at the very beginning. All you have to do is highlight it and then move, uh, click on the down button to get it to where uh, you want it to go. All right, let's say instead of the first officer, the, co or the pilot was responsible for the engine bleeds. You could simply click on this right here and that moves it to captain or you could have just listed that once you added it, you could have made that a captain too, but you can easily change it by simply clicking this field right here. And what that will do is, is instead of the first officer performing this action, engine bleeds would then be listed under the pilot action for once you got to this particular flow or checklist. So that, I like to put the captain because it's just a reminder to me that I have to perform that. So that would be the value of adding something to a flow that's not necessarily performed by the uh, co-pilot, but by the captain. All right. So also to be aware of, there are several other uh, unique commands that necessarily don't conform to the uh, systems. For example, there's a weight action. If you put uh, an, a weight and then first officer being responsible and then choose a value, this is going to be in second. So if you choose 180, for example, uh, the co-pilot, uh, and then we'll add it and we'll just move it down. When the co-pilot got done doing the uh, the flight attendant test, before they started the takeoff configuration test, they would wait one or wait 180 seconds, three minutes uh, between these two actions right here. This can be useful if you need the co-pilot to slow down while you do something particular. So you could do the uh, flows in uh, sync with one another. There are also a couple of other options if you don't want an arbitrary uh, second value, you can choose to um, 902, for example, if you move your EFIS range to 20, the copilot would then move to the next item. So 
that's a good way to do it. So it's not arbitrary and you're just waiting, just move it to 20 and that will signal the copilot to move on. If there's another action you want here, I can, I'll, there's room for as many more as we want under the wait command. So just let me know. And I, and I can uh, definitely add that in to you. For the beta testers, I've already added about eight to 10 actions for them. So if there's something missing here, please, please let me know. Uh, there's one other thing I wanna highlight. Note, there is no power up sequence here. The power up sequence is done through the option as we discussed in, the, uh, in, a, in another tutorial video right here. So if you want the co-pilot to power up the aircraft, just set, uh, set this box to yes. If you want to be responsible for it, you would set it to no. Again, I'm trying to find the balance between simplicity and while giving the users maximum um, flexibility as well. All right, so that is the uh, editor for flows. Let's quickly go ahead and we can now look at um, checklist. As you can see, the checklist values or actions are different. A couple things to, uh, to be aware of here, um, some uh, checklist values, the uh, pilot can actually, or co-pilot can actually do things, not just call items. So let's, uh, for example, if you chose uh, lights and uh, strobe and landing, and then we want to choose our response, which is going to be set. And then looking down here, we can see these are our available values. If you just want the co-pilot to um, call the item, you could, uh, he'll just, you could select two, and then he'll just check if they're on. If you select a value of three, he'll just check if they're off. However, if you want him to set them to on, you would set a value of one. And then we'll go ahead and add it. So what this would do now is once the co-pilot called this, he would call lights. This is his call action. And then since the value is set to one, he would then go ahead and set the landing lights and the strobe lights to the, uh, to the on position and then call set. Now, if this value was, uh, let's say two, two, what he would do is when he got to this action here, he would simply call lights and then he would check to make sure that they're in the on position. And if they are not, he's going to wait for you, the pilot to put them on before moving down and calling this next checklist option, which in this case is oxygen. And then he'll call tested 100%. All right, another example is if we wanted a fuel check, uh, you could see one is checked, in which case he will call it out. But we want him to say, instead of set, we want him to say check. And then the value is going to be one. And then we add that. So when he got the fuel check, he would look at it and then uh, his response would be check. So this will be the call uh, fuel check. This will be the co-pilot uh, response in check. So that is our pre-flight flows in checklist. Let's say that for the default checklist, uh, you kind of want to revert back. You made a whole bunch of changes and you don't really like them. You want to restore the original uh, FSFO uh, checklist. You can do so quite easily. All you have to do is make sure that the uh, aircraft up here is selected and then hit restore. FSFO will ask you a few questions. For one, it will want to make sure you do want to restore it. Uh, do you want Copilot to program FNC route from Simbrief? I do. Do you want them to load fuel and payload? I do. Uh, do you want him to set the performance data? Nope, I'm going to do that. Uh, do you want the uh, the transponder set during after start flow? I do. So, and then we can click restore. And then if we look, uh, there is, uh, again, our checklist back to the normal uh, or the default checklist that, uh, that was shipped with FSFO. Okay, so that's great. We have now created our own checklist. We've created, let's say, a Southwest Airline a checklist or Ryanair checklist. Well, that's great. You've created the checklist. Now you want to know how can I assign that checklist to an aircraft? That would be a great question. If you hold on, I will show you. I'll be right back. Let me load up Microsoft Flight Simulator and uh, we'll show you how to do that. Okay, we're uh, back. Uh, as you can see, we're now back in the cockpit of the PMDG 737 uh, with FSFO. And now we will uh, define how you can assign a checklist that you created to a given aircraft. So let's say, for example, we were in a Southwest livery and we wanted to assign that Southwest checklist that we just created for this aircraft specifically. First thing you would do is uh, you would click on the checklist down here icon. You'll note here, you must be connected to Microsoft Flight Simulator to assign an aircraft checklist. The reason why that is, is because FSFO needs to read the aircraft registration for this particular model. So 
uh, we would go ahead and connect FSFO. And then if we uh, click again, we'll note down here that the user checklist found for aircraft. Now, the reason why there's a user checklist found is because I already assigned the checklist for this aircraft. But let's say I didn't want to use the default PMDG 737 and I wanted to use that Southwest Airline. I would just go in here and I would uh, I would choose the Southwest Airline. Note that uh, the um, uh, FSFO will go ahead and add uh, at, to the beginning the model of whatever uh, file name that you selected. So for example, we'll go back in a minute here and choose that. So all you have to do is go back and uh, select which uh, data file, which profile you want for this specific aircraft. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and so assign the uh, the PMDG uh, Southwest Airlines. So uh, let me go ahead and show you something real quick that I forgot. We forgot um, if you go ahead and you load up the Southwest Airline. If you want to save this as a different name, instead I have Southwest, a or Southwest Airlines. Let's say you wanted a, a Ryanair profile. You could just do Ryanair down here and then you will save it. The one thing I want you to note is if you look, FSFO saves these data files to your documents, FSFO version five directory in the flows and checklist folder. And it saved it right here with PMDG 737 underscore Ryanair. It will add that under, uh, PMDG 737 underscore to identify which uh, model this checklist goes to. So please don't rename those. Those are there for a reason. All you'll know is you'll see the Ryanair. So don't be confused when you go to the sign the checklist and you see the underscore just uh, choose whatever it is you name that aircraft. Okay, now uh, now you'll see if I go ahead and disconnect uh, FSFO and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll clear out all of that. Uh, excuse me, go back to home. And then we reconnect FSFO to the simulator. And if we check the checklist, there you go. You can see that FSFO every time now that it connects since you have it assigned, it will go ahead and use the profile that you assign to this specific aircraft. Now, if you load up a PMGG 737 and you use a different livery and the aircraft has a different tail number, FSFO will not use this, uh, this particular data file. It will use the default data file until you assign a new checklist to it. If you are a user and you don't wanna mess with the checklist, you're happy with the default ones, you never have to do anything. FSFO will just use the default checklist and you never have to assign a single one to it. That's just to give users some flexibility, those who want to really mimic their virtual airlines that they're flying for, uh, that gives you the opportunity to do that. Just as a reminder, if there's an action you need, is something that, that you need the first officer to be able to perform so you can go ahead and, and mimic the checklist, just ask me. I'd be more than happy to add that in. It's no problem whatsoever. I want to make sure that this is as robust as possible for those of you who uh, who you know want to fly by the numbers for that virtual airline. But I just ask that we that we remember that at the core of FSFO, it's also uh, a user friendly product that the user a novice can come in and quickly fly an aircraft. So continue to find that balance, but always willing to work with those uh, those simmers who need a particular action. Okay, so that is it. Uh, for those of you who've noticed, this is uh, probably the second time that I've recorded part two. The reason why I've been delayed uh, in FSFO version five is because I really didn't like how I was uh, handling the archiving and restoring checklists before. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense, and I thought I could do a better job. And I think this really hits the mark to give you an option to assign a Ryanair checklist to a Ryanair livery, a Southwest Airline uh, checklist to a Southwest Airline livery. I think, I think that's more conducive to what simmers need and want. All right, with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start on uh, part four, which is going to be uh, interaction with GSX in the PMG G737. So until then, we'll see you later.